Okay, let's talk about trigonometry. And of course, the title of this little video is Welcome to Trigonometry or your first lesson in trigonometry. And uh, if you've ever been curious about uh, the subject of trigonometry, well, I'm going to try my best to kind of give you a quick introduction to why trigonometry is awesome and it's not beyond anyone's uh, ability to learn. You know, uh, this word trigonometry uh, often scares students. They're like, trigonometry? Oh, no, you know, that's not that crazy stuff. It's just like calculus. You know, people write all this, you know, crazy, mysterious notation. And, you know, people are just like, oh, that's just way too crazy and complex. But uh, it's just language, okay? And it's not that difficult. And even if you've never, you know, uh, studied trigonometry, if you follow me, uh, for a couple minutes with this video, you'll definitely gain an appreciation of what trigonometry is and why it's so uh, uh, useful. Now, uh, if you want to kind of play along, if you will, you know, uh, and do some of this math with me, if you have a calculator, scientific calculator, you're looking for these buttons, uh, this T-A-N-S-I-N-C-O-S. -T this is called the tangent sine and uh, cosine, but... Um, yeah, like on your cell phone, for example, you won't have this in, for the most part, you're not going to have this on your basic view. You'll have to put your cell phone into um, kind of like in a scientific mode. So most cell phone calculator apps, you can switch that over. So this is probably the handiest way. Now, if you do have a scientific calculator with these uh, functions on there, then, you know, um, you're kind of set. But even if you don't have a calculator, you're going to be able to understand this. But I'm pretty sure most of you out there have seen these buttons on calculators, all right? The next time you're at the store and you're, you're passing by the calculator uh, aisle, you know, they're, they're everywhere, you know. You will you could be at CVS, <laughs> Walgreens, and they just have calculators dangling there for students. Take a look at one of those little scientific calculators, and you'll see these buttons on there. Well, these buttons are for trigonometry, okay? And you're going to see their uh, use here in just one second. But let's kind of set this up just to kind of get, um, get excited about the topic of trigonometry. So we're looking at this triangle, okay? And we want to know the height, this, this leg of this triangle. So over here, we're told this is 20 degrees, and this leg of this triangle is 500. Now, if we didn't have trigonometry, we could not determine the length of this leg of this triangle. There's no way to do that. Now, imagine uh, why this is important. Let's say you're trying to determine the height of, oh, I don't know, let's something, a tall object, maybe a skyscraper or something like that. You know, think about it. Are you going to climb up to the skyscraper and measure it? Now, of course, most of you are like, well, we would already know, you know, uh, the height of the skyscraper, but just kind of, you know, play along here, right? What if you wanted to measure a tall object? You're not going to go up there and drop a, a gigantic tape measure down to determine uh, the distance of that, right? We need a better way of determining the distance, and that's where trigonometry comes into play. Now, if I was, let's say, 500 feet from the building, and I was looking down here from the ground to the top of the building, that was 20 degrees, that would be pretty easy for me to uh, determine that, okay? There's all kinds of little optical instruments where you can be like, okay, I'm going to look right here, and then from the very top of the building, that's 20 degrees, and I walked, you know, paced myself off on 500 feet away from the base of the building, and I see the top of the building at 500 feet at 20 degrees. Well, this is enough information to determine the distance or the height of that building. Of course, you need to know a little bit about uh, trigonometry, and this is a, an introduction to uh, the topic. But this is the type of problems that are so powerful that you can solve with trigonometry. Now, um, I'm going to be, you know, getting, um, I don't want to make this like a super technical uh, video, right? So we're talking about right angle trigonometry, and there is a lot of advanced stuff in trigonometry beyond the scope of this little video. So that's not the point, okay? This is the first lesson. We want you to kind of warm up and be excited about this, and maybe one day, who knows, maybe you'll take my uh, pre-calculus course, which I'm going to be launching in about a week, where you'll learn a ton of trigonometry. But uh, anyways, we're going to get to this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And uh, over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. You can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But basically, I've, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra, algebra 1, 
uh, geometry, algebra two. Again, I'm going to be launching pre-calculus, which has trigonometry in it, advanced trigonometry, uh, in about a week. But I also do a lot in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for the GED, high set task, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, um, Accuplacer, Alex exam, CLEP exam, maybe a teacher certification exam like the Praxis exam, all those exams and many uh, more. I have great test prep courses uh, for. So just go to my website, check out my full course catalog. I should be able to help you out. If I don't have what you're studying for, drop me a line and I'll help you out the best I can. I also do a lot with homeschoolers. So if you homeschool, I have a great homeschool uh, learning system. And then obviously help those of you who are having a tough time in your current math courses. Now, if you're truly serious about wanting to do well in mathematics, then you got to be serious about your note taking. I know it's a lot of work, you know, every day to take great notes, but this is the secret to being awesome in math. So I've been teaching math for decades. The one thing that I can point to with consistency is those students who take great math notes almost end up looking like this person at the end of the school year. And those students that do not take uh the uh, great notes look like this person. They're like, wait, what a minute. I got a D plus or a C minus minus. Well, listen, you know, you got to put the work in. Okay. And it's not like taking some notes, you know, like every other Tuesday, it's got to be consistent, great note taking. And that requires work and focus. But if you do that, okay, you'll end up looking like this person at the end of the school year. Now, in the meantime, as you're improving your note taking, you can use my notes. Uh, those would include pre-algebra, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, and Trigonometry. You can find the links to those notes in the description of this video. Okay, let's get into some trigonometry. And uh, the first thing that I'm going to teach you, okay, is this cool phrase. Now, this phrase, I don't know who established it or how long it's been around, but it's been around probably... 50, 60, 70 years, maybe even longer, who knows? I mean, it's been around a long time, let's just say this much. And it's this uh, little uh, phrase right here, and this is the essence of trigonometry. It's called so ka toa. So ka toa. Now, you might be saying to yourself, all right, this guy's definitely, you know, you know, he's not playing with a full deck of cards. He's talking this crazy language. No, just listen to me for one second. This is called so ka toa. And if you remember that, you will understand basic trigonometry. Like, wow, really? Yes. Okay. Now, you remember those little buttons I was talking about on our calculator, the S-I-N, C-O-S, T-A-N? Well, these are what we call trigonometric uh, functions, but they're uh, basically more appropriately uh, described as uh, trigonometric ratios. Now, I'm going to explain to you uh, how this works. So this little phrase right here, this so has to deal with the sine, okay? This ka has to deal with the cosine, and this toa has to deal with the tangent. So these are the names of the three primary trigonometric uh, functions. Now, here's how it works. So in a right triangle, okay, where this angle down here is 90 degrees, uh, let's identify this angle. So this problem that we're doing has 20 degrees down here. Now, the longest side of any right triangle, the longest side of any right triangle is called the hypotenuse. So we'll just identify that as H, okay? Now, let's take a look at this 20 degrees. We have an O side and an A side. Now, what does O stand for? It's the leg opposite to the angle, okay? So the leg that's opposite to where the angle is located is called the O side, and the leg of the triangle or the side of the triangle that is adjacent, basically connecting or help forming the angle is called the adjacent. Okay, so this is the adjacent, this is the opposite, and this is the hypotenuse. Remember, the hypotenuse is always going to be the longest side, and this can change depending on where the angle is at. If I have the angle here, this will be the opposite, and this would be the adjacent. Okay, but the hypotenuse would still be um, the longest side of a right triangle. So if you understand that, then, you know, you're well on your way of understanding basic trigonometry. Now, you might be saying, really? Yes, really. Watch. It's not that difficult. All right, let's talk about sine, okay? So you've got this little thing here called so, okay? So that means that the sine of this angle, okay, this angle right here, is uh, defined as the opposite over the hypotenuse. So in this case, it would be O over H. So we write that as a fraction. So the sine is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. We use this little mnemonic here to help us remember this. So, okay, so that's sine 
opposite over the hypotenuse. So that in this case, the sine of 20 degrees would be whatever the distance of this side of this triangle is divided by, or yes, divided by the uh, hypotenuse, okay? So the cosine is what? Well, the cosine is equal, or the cosine of this angle, for example, would be the, the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So ka toa. So this is, you know, how you remember this. So the cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Again, the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. And the tangent is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. Okay, the opposite over the adjacent. So these are what we call the uh, trigonometric, uh, trigonometric ratios. Now, in this problem that we're doing, let's go down here, all right. We're trying to solve, for, we're trying to find this distance x, and we know this side right here, we have 500. So when you're doing trigonometry, you have options. You could be like, okay, which one do I wanna use? Do I wanna use a sine, cosine, or tangent uh, to help me solve this problem? Well, the way to uh, identify the correct uh, trigonometric uh, function that you, we need to involve to use to solve this problem is we have to ask ourselves, well, what do we have? Okay, well, I have this side and I have this side. Of course, this is my angle. Now, this side, recall, is the what? This is the opposite. So I have the O and this side I have the A. So out of our selections here, which one involves the O and the A? Okay. So we're like, okay, this is O and H. So it's not this guy. This is A and H, not this guy. Ooh, look, at this has an O and an A. This has an O and an A. So I'm going to use the tangent. And that's exactly how you identify the correct um, trigonometric function to solve your little problem. So now, now that you know this, okay, that the tangent is the opposite over the adjacent, we're ready to rock and roll and get our solution here. Okay, now, of course, if you do have a calculator, um, you'll be able to kind of um, calculate this with me, but if you don't, I've already done it in advance. All right, now, here we go. So uh, I know that the tangent of this guy is the opposite over the adjacent, which is x over 500. Okay, remember, again, this is the opposite, okay, which is x. I don't know that, but I do know my adjacent is 500, okay? So this is how you solve... Um, a right triangle problem using trigonometry. Okay, so we're gonna say the tangent of 20 degrees is equal to x over 500. Okay, we already defined that, why that's the case, because that's the opposite over the adjacent. Now, if you have your calculator handy, and make sure, by the way, if uh, just to be extra safe, in your calculator, scientific calculator, you can work in something called degrees and radians. Uh, by default, your calculator will be in degree mode you'll see like, you know, like 30 degrees. Well, normally you don't see that little degree uh, indication, but you'll see DEG, okay? Just make sure because you can put a calculator in radian mode, which uh, is, um, you know, will get you the wrong answer. Let's just say that. It's because we are working, we're measuring this angle in degrees, but a little side thing here. So most of you are going to be in degree mode right now. But anyways, if you go into your calculator and put in 20 degrees or 20 or the TAN uh, of 20 and hit, you'll get a decimal, okay? You'll get you'll get a number, a value. So this is just a, a value. So what we have here is just a nice basic equation to solve. So the way we solve this is very, very easy. It's not that hard in terms of the algebra. We're simply gonna just cross multiply, okay? So one times X is X, 500 times tangent of 20. Well, let's just write it this way, 500 times tangent of 20. Now, I literally go into my calculator and go 500 times the uh, tangent of 20. I can just type that in, T-A-N, parenthesis 20. You'll hit that. You'll get a value. Of course, you do need your calculator for this part. And when you hit enter, we'll get this number approximately. X is equal to 181.9. And what is that? That is the length of this side of the triangle. Okay? And you are done. Now, once you have this side and this side, then you can use other things like the Pythagorean theorem uh, to get the hypotenuse, okay? You get this side, or you can use um, sine or cosine to get that side as well. But if you understand this, then effectively, this is your first primary lesson in trigonometry. And, you know, if you're like, wow, that was awesome, hopefully your expression is just like, that is amazing, that is so cool. 
uh, that you can do this. Yes, indeed, it is awesome. Okay, in a former life, um, way back many, many, many decades ago, I was a U.S. Navy surface warfare officer, did all kinds of different tours and whatnot. But uh, one of the things I did was a navigator. I was a navigator on a, a particular ship, which means I was the officer in charge of navigating the ship. So it was a lot of trigonometry. And I had to use uh, celestial navigation. We didn't always rely on GPS, which meant that I was taking angles of stars and time and everything else. It was just so cool to be able to find um, the position of our ship by using just stars and mathematics and time and everything else. There's a lot of uh, beauty to this stuff. And this has been around for a long time. Okay. Uh, but... Again, the practical application of trigonometry, it's like everywhere, okay? And it doesn't require, you don't have to be like a rocket scientist, you know, to uh, understand this. And hopefully I did a basic job. So, again, let me just say this much. Nobody should be doing uh, poorly in math, okay? If you are having a tough time, again, do your part. Start taking great notes. Talk to your teacher. But if you need more help beyond that, I could definitely help you out if you like my teaching style. I have tons of videos on my channel, Basic to Advanced Math. Been on YouTube for like 10 plus years. I think I have over, um, I know I have over 1,000 plus videos. So, you know, um, you know, use those videos, okay? I have all kinds of different topics. Of course, my best math help will be within my math help program. But if you like this uh, video in some small way, if you thought it was pretty interesting, please end by smashing that like button. That will make me very happy. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.